All right, y'all, y'all know what time it is. It is time for the breakdown. How did Garp dismantle Ki Kuzan the way he did? We're going to slow it down. We're going to break it down. We're going to do the things that we normally do with the episode when it's gas. And arguably, this episode was better than last episode, even though a lot of people prefer last episode because it's more explosive, literally and figuratively. But... This episode might have been more impactful based on the direction, I think the art, the message, the subtle nuances in it. So without further ado, let's get to it. Skip and recap. So Navy surprised. Former Admiral, former Admiral Kuzan. So after everything, the people were talking about Blackbeard's fit, saying he looked like he was cosplaying as Luffy. And I agree 1000% like what's going on. But this is before Blackbeard had the... I think this moment is very impactful just because this is the moment where you have Blackbeard and Kuzan, they first meet. It is all the notions about Kuzan infiltrating the Blackbeard pirates, trying to get information. No, Blackbeard, they were they are recruiting Kuzan. Now, in this moment specifically, you can tell that Katarina and those guys, when Blackbeard gets upset, they just move out the way because no one can stop him or control him. Um, this is something that's reminiscent to even the Straw Hats, where when Luffy is, Luffy doesn't rampage, but the Straw Hats typically get out of his way because they're like, yo, Luffy's going to be Luffy, and Blackbeard is kind of the same way. Um... And so Blackbeard seemingly has a temper himself and he does not use his quake fruit because he does not want to you lose his friends and he destroys a the entrance to this bar. Now, the funny part about this is that Kuzan does not move at all. Um, something that I saw as well was that it's you see the three skulls and you see Blackbeard and then we see Blackbeard and Blackbeard only has two strands in his beard. Now he has three. So it's just like, are we saying that Blackbeard, Blackbeard only had two devil fruits at this point? Because this is for Blackbeard's epic glow up, in my opinion. Uh, but I love this moment because it just shows Kuzan and how unhinged he is at this point. Um, and again, he showed the loyalty of the Blackbeard pirates that after they're just like, hey, like we're here. And what I liked about this scene is that Blackbeard, he already know, right? He already knows. He knows the fight. And I think mentioning that Kainu was a way to somewhat provoke Aokiji, right? And it worked. It worked essentially because Aokiji does retaliate. And I mean, at this point, you would assume that, well, Blackbeard is nerfed, right? He can't use his earthquake. And 1v1, if it's just using the darkness fruit, I'm sorry, I don't think he beats Kuzan. Um, and so at this point, there's, there's only lose-lose. The only win-win is a draw, right? Um, I know people look at the darkness fruit and Kuro's and things like that. Most veterans will be able to combat it. Ace could combat it. Um, I think at that point, because Law and he, him being engaged with Blackbeard, there wasn't much that he could do, you know? Um, I did want us to see something in regards to this scuffle or this squabble but um i'm gonna assume that the director i'm sure inquired about that was like hey is there anything we can do here and it's probably like mm, no just there's nothing there let's just move pa let's just move past it um i think more than anything this scene is showing us like blackbeard in his element right that he's not like luffy in being able to make friends out of everybody but i think he can make allies out of anybody so blackbeard can understand what people want and he plays on their desires so he's really good at that where luffy's good at recruiting people in a different way right and he even gave him a nickname remember luffy gives his guys his people's nickname he gave aokiji the nickname of ice pop which i mean it's endearing you know i think what i liked about seeing kuzan here this is him completely out of his element you know and and so no pun intended um and so like seeing him here he's typically stoic cold dry you know just lethargic um something somebody pointed out i can't take credit for it somebody pointed out that kuzan while he was an admiral he used to wear the sleeping um the sleeping mask he does not have that anymore he's as fired up as he's ever been something that people should know is that kuzan's form of justice was different before ohara if you knew that some people didn't know that for sure and now and after ohara it became lazy justice and so now he is as fired up as he's ever been so him th telling jokes about akainu even after akainu took his leg etc and gave him permanent scars you know it's showing that this is a man that's wandering but still has um intentions right he's an intentional wanderer lost his leg telling jokes at a party and there's a question right i'm not gonna lie um uh avila pizarro he asked a very good question saying, yo, all right, you lost a leg. Did he take one of his arms? And, you know, Kazan, he's like, nah, but he's pretty scarred up, you know? It's like, all right. 
I kind of got a few scars. What laugh is that? And then we get information about the man with the burn scar, which I think is very important information considering like this man seemingly has one of the road poneglyphs that we need to get a laugh tail. So um, this is something that's really, really, really important that they're saying this random guy that we have no idea who he is. This guy has one of those, right? Big mom Kaido, the man with the burn scar. Like, of course, Zoe had one. They don't know about that. So and this is at this point, this is um, during the time skip. Of course, they have an extra one now because of law. So um, Van Aug is interesting because I wonder what his upbringing is because he's now mentioning fate. And the more I look at him, he looks like he probably could have been somebody that worked in a church or something. So him being a believer of Blackbeard makes sense. And of course, Doc Q and his curses and stuff like that, it, it goes in line. Trying to shoot you was there. I didn't even notice him. I thought it was funny. And I think it's an apt joke considering there are people that were out there saying that the man with the burn scar could be Aokiji. So, you know, funny joke, funny joke. Pitch black ship. That's why a lot of people thought it was Dragon because Dragon has a black ship. Um, And then the, what, what they mentioned about the weather and whirlpools, etc. You know, it goes in line where we think about Dragon's fruit, where it's like being able to create like wind, like wind, like twisters on the, on the water. It goes well in line. It just doesn't make sense considering what Dragon's goal is. And Dragon, from what we know, he just, he's not on the move on the sea like that. So it has to be someone that we know and somebody that's relevant somebody that's important to have a road poneglyph and pick up that road poneglyph from fishman island and take it with them facts put that joint in emu's room put it in emu's treasure room i like shiru's observations because you know he's one of the grizzled vets on the crew but again at this point i think they're testing each other more blackbeard testing kuzan um and kuzan's trying to be as honest as possible without revealing too much about himself because i just met you guys right and the sentimentality of what he's saying doesn't resonate with them because they're savages like look at him they're like confused right he's like what kind of dull story is that like they don't care for that story and blackbeard is even like eh? and this made lafitte ask blackbeard yo should we get rid of this dude which is insane for in my opinion to ask considering who aokiji is it's like you it's almost like you forgot you know like every single one y'all getting packed up every single one until he gets to blackbeard so you in quite the quandary it's a beautiful power it seems like she was just going after whatever devil fruit but you gotta you gotta take him down to get it yeah this is a much more unhinged aokiji versus like the last aokiji was a bit more patient wouldn't want to talk it out maybe just like get out of there but you know insane request insane request considering what's going on right now and recruiting a former admiral i mean it is insane 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 bolster to the crew but clearly work clearly this stuff worked bro it worked great speech great speech and he has the presence you can't that's the thing um i think this is very important here that it's a distinction being formed between luffy and black where luffy if somebody joins his crew he assumes that you are friends i've become very friendly with you I appreciate your friendship. Can you come join me? For a Blackbeard, it is a bunch of people just going towards the same goal, um, or towards a goal that benefits them. And that's why they're working together. Where it's like, we're not going to just front and act like we're the best of friends or whatever. But like Luffy's crew, that's how they do. Not saying everybody's the best of friends, but everybody on the crew is at least friends. On Blackbeard's crew, it's like, yo, that's not what we are at all. And this is when Blackbeard gets a bit devious. I don't know why the moon was shown. That makes things a bit, eh, because there have been moon theories before. Um... I think saying to Aokiji, you're free now. What do you want to do? I think it makes a ton of sense, bro. If you can get an admiral on your crew, you try to do it. You're free. What do you want to do? I think using Blackbeard as a springboard makes a lot of sense, considering what I think the future for Aokiji and what it holds. Damn, already halfway through. Already half. It's crazy. So Aokiji's a bit stun locked, right? Because it's like, I don't know what I want to do, but it would be great to be able to move the way i want to um this is something i wanted to see because people said some cool scenes were in here because now it's flashbacks right now it's a ton of flashbacks we got ace ohara I, damn he's reminiscent about akainu the marines some more ace young garp look at that young garp y'all him his mom was smoker luffy pulling up kizaru him packing up robin or luffy akainu robin wow wow these are things that we don't we didn't see these are things we didn't see these are things he's thinking about before his fight with garp and he thinks about blackbeard mohara luffy and garp like these are things that's on his mind you know these are things he thinks about it's sad it's really sad and now kiji kuzan has i think grown and rose to like one of our favorite characters but these are the things he's thinking about just how the world has been overall look at this look at this this moment is coming it's coming y'all it's coming battleship bags like he's just going through the gauntlet right now of all his mind all of his emotions the things he's thinking about Thinking about Akainu a lot. I mean, I get it. Akainu and Garp and Ace, um, which is tough considering how traumatic all this shit is. And I'm so I'm so happy that they managed to put all this stuff in here 
Because in real time, I didn't see any of this. I saw stuff flashing, but I was like, what? Like, what's flashing? So, I, Kuzan, for what it's worth, is a very complex individual. And I think he's one of those that I would love to be fleshed out even more. But that would take some time. Now, when we get down to the nitty gritty, this deep breath was him kind of affirming his resolve, making sure that he wanted to do this or preparing himself to do this because it is garb. Not strength, not a strength thing, but more of a respect thing, right? Because even when he addresses him, it's still garb son. You know, that tells you everything you need to know with that. It's a different mindset. It's a different mindset. Um, interestingly enough, I don't know if this is the aesthetic they're going for, but on Garp's side, it looks like fire. On Aokiji's side, it looks like ice. Really reminiscent to the Akainu fight. We know Garp isn't really a fire, man. If he can use something like a variant to Red Hawk, Hawk, I wouldn't be surprised, but like, come on. Here we go. Garp's voice actor here is absolutely amazing because I think he delivers the pain in Garb's voice, the apprehension. So um, Garb's voice actor absolutely cooked, absolutely cooked. I've seen a lot of people mention how they really enjoyed how he delivered that because the entire time Garp has been coming off as like superior to everyone and just, you know, kind of calling shots and doing his own thing. You know, this is a moment that's messing with him, bro. It's really messing with him because this is his, this is somebody that he used to train, somebody that he cared about, you know, and Kuzan has a job to do now. It's like, if I'm going to affirm my resolve as a a pirate this kind of is what it is and this is the perfect step right going through the ultimate marine and you know coming out on the right side of that so yeah he knows garb he understands garb he's a fan of garb garb's his hero now they're fighting so he just also he just turned up right and again he's still a, he's still addressing him as garb son right still addressing him in that way garb told kobe to get out the way like this might get a little dangerous a little messy something about this this i think it go it would probably go over a lot of people's heads saying i, I like how straightforward you are so i'm living the way i want to now garp is about living without consequence um and doing the things he wants to do right All, like that's just what he does even declining the admiral position that's just what he does and because he's who he is they can't just replace him let's be honest you can replace garp at this point. um now kuzan he's saying i appreciate how you are now i'm living the way i want to which is how i want to live right now is working with the black beard pirate right he's like you can appreciate that considering the type of person you are but garp is like no 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 no. but kuzan is ultimately saying how garp is kind of led him to where he is now not down that specific path but kind of the resolve but i mean it's both wavering um but garp is like i'm not trying to hear that shit i'm gonna pound you into oblivion because that's what i do and i'm garp so kuzan traps him in the ice and he, he launches his first attack in ice ball um, which I really like the attack. I like the aesthetic of it. Garp blocks it. He gets turned into a popsicle or icicle. Uh, I think at this point, you know, it, it, you're hoping for a good fight, but Aokiji taking the ice off and then just making it bigger because of his devil fruit is just like, it's just peak, right? We don't see a lot of these top tiers fight that often, so we just got to enjoy peak, right? Um, something here we got to talk about is Aokiji saying he's saying in, in order to save his beloved pupil, he got to kill his pupil, pupil from the past. So you got to kill Kuzan to save Kobe. And he's like, can you do it? And Garp is basically trying to correct him by saying, bro, you're living in the past. You're kind of living in the past of our relationships and our history. That doesn't matter right now. Right now, we're in the moment. You wanted to play? Let's play. Have you ever played? Okay, nigga, let's play. That's what Garp is saying to him. Have you ever played? Have you ever? Okay, nigga, let's play. Now, let's evaluate this. Let's evaluate this choreography because I think it gets lost a little bit, right? This choreography was actually pretty peak. It was actually pretty peak. So, sends the attacks. Garp, he's a hockey master, so these things don't affect him. Now, this attack, right? Garp is such a savvy veteran that he sends the ice back to Kuzan. But he's not just sending the ice back. He's sending them laced with hockey. So, Kuzan, with him, if it's ice, he's just able to just transform it and just, like, phase through it. He has to actively dodge these things which I think looks super dope for a man his size, but he's actively dodging these things, which, you know, it's kind of compounding the problem. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, but then what I liked about the moment was after Garp and showing how versatile he was, right, with those... Um, with those projectiles, Kuzan immediately regroups, right? Dodges them cleanly. Um, one hit him, managed to block it and get out of there with his devil fruit. He does that and he gains higher ground, which again, this is something that I think for veterans, it feels easy and normal, but I think it's just like, it's just peak strategy. And Garp, man, Garp is somebody that, again, a veteran where like Kuzan's ice is gonna have to be way more potent than that for it to work. People are saying this is Garp just using armament. I don't think this is just Armin. Look at the lightning. Look at what he's doing. I think this is clearly Garp just using Conqueror's hockey. I don't know why people are so gung-ho and not believe in Garp as Conqueror's hockey. I guess because Garp hasn't knocked anybody out. Not knocked anybody out yet. 
but i mean come on what are we doing now gar perfect form right he tries to make this platform unstable because then that's gonna make kuzan unstable right i think this was my favorite moments in the show in the episode because garp sends a projectile as a decoy kuzan reacts to that and then garp reacts to kuzan so one of the more disrespectful attacks in anime because he grabs his face and then he sends him to hell right kuzan i love this 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 it was so many small things that they added i'm just like yo this is great um they added kuzan when garp is about to send him to the blue hole he's trying to freeze garp in the meantime you know which is it reminds me of when kuzan was fighting against whitebeard and whitebeard stuck him and he evaded whitebeard's blade he then tried to um attack whitebeard you know so kuzan he's not really new to this but like he's never been he's never encountered like a serious garp before garp sent him to, to hell with blue hole right so that's a devastating attack one of the one of the more subtle but devastating attacks in the story just because he just threw him into the ground, right? This is him just using regular strength, right? This is him using regular strength. This is even extra. So um, I think this is an amazing feat. Kuzan got dismantled. Um, the look on Garb's face here is just disappointment and sadness because, like, you know, that was his pupil, right? And he doesn't want to do this. And Kuzan, you know, he's just falling into the abyss. Unfor fortunately, unfortunately. So that's something that's 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 crazy. I had forgotten Winter Island and everything that happened in Winter Island until, like, okay, I had to be reminded, right? Something that people were kind of skeptical on was blackbeard just walking out of the water we see him coming from the shore we're not sure exactly how deep he was in the water if he was even submerged but you know he is walking back to the shore maybe he got sent flying he was in shallow water either way blackbeard can't swim right that's not something that i think can happen i know some people were worried about that i don't think you should be worried about that you'll be fine now blackbeard walking out he thinks about his distress and he thinks about the w's that he had now for blackbeard he ran into law and law's crew got absolutely packed up it's not as bad as kid right but law's crew got packed up blackbeard didn't have his entire crew um and and this isn't this just isn't law's special you know law's specialty is not the 1v1 fights law's specialty is being support kind of playing it by air and being safe Run, running into a buzzsaw like blackbeard is not his specialty i mean of course he tried to run away and stuff like that but unfortunately he got sucked back in um blackbeard's perspective is like if you lost your ship you're no longer a pirate group and so he felt like he had law dead to rights and then he is additional incentive because law's pirates right the rocky port incident that somehow gave law uh, basically gave law the route to becoming a warlord the hundred pirates they didn't get killed he just took their hearts right and so blackbeard is saying yo they, they live on the island so i just take them your hearts and like we'd be good we'd be gucci they want to serve me even more at least have a great party about it considering how long they've been trying to get get law van august somebody again like the more i see him in the anime the more i feel like he comes from some church or some occult um so i do like van auger um doc q stay away from me um i think in this moment in this moment beppo uh taking a rumble ball i like that they gave us a flashback as to like where he got him because he just pulled up with him and be like uh, i mean that's what we're gonna assume anyway we're gonna assume it's chopper anyway like even if they don't show us this we're gonna assume it's chopper if you assume it's anybody else something's wrong with you. now blackbeard talking about the opi opi and me having said like i'm having a hard time deciding whether to sell or use the opi opi you know me just tells you about like just the i guess the complexities of the fruit which is, like is not simple at all but blackbeard knowing about the perpetual youth surgery as well something to monitor because you know blackbeard is just a walking bundle of joy um but the perpetual youth uh, surgery how do you know about that is that something that's common it's this it's seemingly not that common blackbeard is just tapped in and so him saying that is kind of scary because like no we don't need that we don't need him doing that at all at all at all i think this is a great shot with all the blackbeard pirates well not all of them but the ones that there it's a beautiful shot beautiful shot intimidating scary great shot great 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 shot um and now they're trying to take his devil fruit um somebody has something to say about that and that somebody is su long form ish Beppo. now i know people are gonna shit on Beppo, but su long Beppo. i mean look at this Almost damn near broke Burgess's neck. Look at Blackbeard there. Like, damn, how the hell I end up here? How do I get caught up in the mix? I said sorry. Right? Sent them flying. Amazing kick. And think about how strong Carrot got after she ate her, her rumble, her fruit, or whatever the hell it was. So, at this point, bro, at this point, Beppo is 
tapping into commander strength all right commander strength as a mink and this is actually crazy i have a black bit again again shows his knowledge hey we, the moon's not out how is this happening but this is just like overwhelming strength there's some things you just can't think your way out of you know van auger just warped away and left his captain dead to rice again this shows the difference between the the crews nobody would do that with luffy right it was just like nah we gotta we gotta take it blackbeard's there he takes that big shot and then this was one of the best parts of the episode where you know, Beppo seemingly dead to rights by Van Auger, pulls out the blicky. Beppo just strictly using his feet, packs him up, bro. Packs him up, put him to rest for a while, saying summer is over. So Beppo is a real one because Beppo, even in the situation, was still managed to save his captain. And that's the goal of a right hand, right? You can't let your captain fall or falter. And so it's one of those where Beppo, get, Beppo gets big W's because Law was able to get away because of him. And Law is one of our favorite characters. And Blackbeard was going to kill Law. It wasn't like a banishment. It was done. It was done. Too late. Too late, baby. Yeah, Beppo saving Law is one of the best moments in the series considering how much we care about Law and what he's willing to do for his captain. Um, Law will be back. Law will definitely be back. But one of my favorite characters for certain. I like the speech after too. I love the speech after. Not going to say this is intentional, but it definitely is. Um, Beppo trying to rally the troops is something that's interesting considering it's Beppo but it's real it's real it's definitely real again Beppo's a real one Beppo is an absolute real one now law what's the next ship what's the next ship he got you know they've been saying like a lot of stuff underwater what's the next what's his next ship because law is gonna need a submarine that's just how he is gonna need a submarine man why did why did he laugh at that that's something that I saw where it's like Blackbeard came back and I don't know what he's looking at essentially like they're trying to make it seem like he's looking at Law's hat and ecstatic. I'm not sure if it's Law's hat or if it's the blood, but he's just like really happy that this happened, which is which is really interesting. That got packed up. Got packed up. Packed up. But Beppo saved this captain. So big W. Big W's on Beppo. Um, Beppo's end. You love to see. Yeah. Next episode preview is gonna be Buggy. Buggy doing his thing. And you know we love Buggy doing his thing. It's gonna be a lot to talk about actually. So ah, gonna be interesting. Gonna be interesting. Yeah. One of my favorite moments from Buggy comes from this episode. So I really can't wait. But guys give me your thoughts on the episode um do you think it was better or worse than last week's and what are some things you think i missed what are some things you know that you just want to give your thoughts on let me know like the video subscribe at brogdy ace follow me on instagram and brogdy.ace and um i'll catch you in the next one